the defensive left end, Dave Kulp, a six foot one sixty five senior D lineman, brought down the fine running back of the Monoman Indians, Jason Miller. A little sliver there for Miller as the fake to Bjorgi draws some of the defenders and then he shook off one tackle and it's into four down territory again. Look at that Manoma. hole that Mark Kalbaugh and Chuck McNamee opened up for Jason Miller to run through. That's the job, of course. They're doing it well. Third and four at the 11. Here it goes to Miller and he's hauled down at the one yard line on the sprint all the way as Jamie Hoosman caught up with him just shy of the goal line. You can see how quickly Miller hits the hole. Has he ever? Watch this. This blows through there. He has six yards of real estate before anybody can gather his ankles, and he forces it down to the one-yard line. Jesse Struthers helping to open, and the Becker Bulldogs come charging across before Oakland can get the ball snapped. Now, Miller went in motion that time. Whether he drew the defense off, say, yeah, that's what Offside they're ruling. it is. And that'll make it less than a yard to the end zone on first and goal. So now it's half the distance, which is now about the foot and a half line. And the Becker Bulldogs dig in at the goal line. It is first and goal for Monoman. Tight end set all the way. In goes Jeremy Oakland, and it's a touchdown for Monoman. First blood of the Class C championship game goes to the Monoman Indians with 7.33 to go in the first half as senior quarterback Jeremy Oakland on the keeper. He had quick count that time. It was probably first sound, enabling his men to know that they could fire off the ball immediately. You could see Becker's linebackers were still kind of shifting, wondering where the play was going to come, and Oakland had the ball and sneaked over right guard. Oh, and the snap was not. I don't think the placement wasn't quite in. In any event, the kick will go awry, and it'll be six points only with 7.33 to go in the first half. Score now is the Monoman Indians six and the Becker Bulldogs nothing as the Metrodome sees the Class C championship game roll on. 7.33 to go in the first half. Class C championship game at the Metrodome with Jim Gilliland, Doug McLeod. It is six to nothing Monoman leading the Becker Bulldogs as Monoman Steve Turner will kick off following that plunge by Hoosman. And the kick shanked here. The placement was all right. It, it was like he got it down. Like Turner. The way he went over and looked at that spot for a minute. Looked like he thought there was something wrong with it. Travis Thorne and Justin Hegna are deep to receive for Becker. As the senior Steve Turner lifts one off. It'll be taken by Thorne at the 12. 25. And taken down across the 25 at about the 27-yard line by Dwayne Lebel, the junior linebacker on kick coverage special teams as Travis Thorne gets the return. Fourth possession for Becker. They've yet to start outside their own 30-yard line, although Thorne had a good return of the opening kickoff. They threw the interception immediately, and they've been in the hole ever since. Becker has good skill people and plenty of experience. Monoman coach Ken Bowman says the Bulldogs are unquestionably the best offensive team the Indians have faced. At the 28, it's first and 10. Worming and carrying and taking three men with him to the right side was the fullback Mike Koenig. Just bring through. Similar offenses there as they try to, try to create the triple option there, whether give it to the up man, in this case, Koenig for Becker. And then if the quarterback, Huseman, holds onto the ball, he's got the option of keeping, fading back to pass, pitching to the tailback, Lundin. Both have been very successful with it. And it'll be second and short now for Becker. Second down and two for Becker at its own 36-yard line. Jamie Huseman, the senior quarterback. And they get across the line of scrimmage for a first down. And Johnson. Second time they've gone straight ahead with the quarterback. Obviously, when there is a situation where they see the Manoman linebackers off, they're going to go take that little bit of yardage they can get. And last time it went for about five or six. This time another first down. Jason Finkston splits out wide to the left. Jamie Burke, their wide receiver to the right side. 
Koenig and Lundin are split behind Jamie Hoosman. Big draw onto the flat and drop right in and out of the hands of Jamie Johnson. Or rather of Jason Finkston at the 48-yard line. That's one of those plays like you see uh, the Vikings try to get to Anthony Carter. You mentioned that they like to get the ball to yeah. Finkston as much as they can. He, he took a short route, and Houston laid it right in there, and Finkston obviously knows that he should have had that ball because he pounded his feet, fists on the turf. Second and ten. Finkston again out on the pattern to the left at the top of your screen. That's Jamie Bird again to the right. Go over right tackle to Jamie to Mike Koenig, the fullback, and Chris Holbeck, the defensive end, sniffed that one out and hauls him down as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Now move the ball down to the just shy of the 45-yard line, and it'll be now third and about five. As Hoosman leads him up to the line, it is six to nothing. Manoman leading. Becker with the ball. Boozman, pitch back, goes to Lundin, stutters in, got ambushed by Burt Leslie, the defensive left tackle as he got to the line of scrimmage for no gain on the play. Well, he tried to go wide using that speed, but Manoman's defense averaging has given up less than seven points a game, and they're on schedule to break that right now because they've got a big goose egg up there for Becker. Lundin trying to make the corner, saw that it was futile to go wide, tried to cut it up. The maroon shirts were waiting. Gang tackle, and you just see Mike Kramer, the quarterback, come sailing over the top there as well. There's the punt by Hoosman. It'll be fielded by Jeremy Oakland at the 25. Oakland twisting and turning and swarmed down finally shy of the 35-yard line with four minutes and 39 seconds to go in the first half as Justin Hegna wrapped him up on the return. And now the Monoman Indians will crank up and get going, coming in with a record of 12 wins and one loss. Monoman lost its third game of the season to Breckenridge, a rare shutout, 7 to nothing game. Of course, Indians we've seen piled up 10 consecutive wins since then. We've seen Breckenridge in the prep bowl, but so we know um, how good they are. Won the Class B championship in 88. Twins left, first and 10 on the 35-yard line. The draw goes to Miller, and he crosses the 35 to the 36, gain of maybe a yard of the play. The quarterback Justin Hegna with good read. Shot that one down, and it'll be a gain of just under two yards. I'm sure Ken Bauman would like to control the clock, use the remaining four minutes plus, get his team down in position to get another score with that ball control offense of theirs. And they're going to have to do it from second and long now because first down didn't get them very much. Slot to the right. Again, it goes for Jason Miller, who busts through a big hole and gets to the 43-yard line. Travis Thorne, the safety. Got to him, but the explosive power of Jason Miller, we've talked about it already, he can really drop ship. You mentioned the line play early, and again, when you have to call the safety's number, that means he's getting a lot of room. The linebackers in line were blocked. If Miller had been able to get by Thorne and put a move on him, he would have had a lot of room down the left side. This is a rebuilt deep offensive line this year, and it's been maybe the nicest surprise of the year for Ken Bowman. Only one returning starter from last year. That one goes up the middle and does not get anywhere. Their only returning starter was Chris Newman, the defensive tackle. They moved him to tight end to try to give the line open holes, as a general rule anyway, for Jason Miller. That time, not much through as it comes up shy of the 45, but it does get the first down. That would have been an interesting decision that will not have to be made because I thought it was a little bit short, but no, they got the first down, and it would have been fourth and inches on their own 45 with three minutes to go. Would they have gone for it? Well, they're going to keep the ball. Manoman with it. And a six to nothing lead. Now first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Smack right at the line and big penetration by Jeremy Kalish, who's a big dog at 6'2", 220 senior defensive tackle. They haven't thrown the ball yet and I don't no. think they can get down the field unless they do. Just two and a half remaining. Second and long now for Manoman. Ball at the 44 yard line with two and a half minutes to go in the first half. 
Indians with the ball and the lead. As Jeremy Oakland, the senior quarterback, leads them up. Chuck McNamee, number 57, is the junior center. Ocean Miller, option right. Oakland long, tip and off the fingertips of his intended receiver, Travis Casty, number 44, the split end. One of the tri-captains, Casty, was in good position there. Oakland put it up nicely. Catch could have been made, although there was some good defensive work done, too. They were right on it, Thorne and Hegna in pursuit. We had Chris Newman down there as well, number 87, as you see. And he had Dan Klein all over him. 2.12 to go in the half. is 6 to nothing, Monoman. Third down and 11 at the 44 for the Indians. Here's Jeremy Oakland on the run. Oakland working on Klein, who finally wraps him off the 45-yard line and out of bounds. But a good sprint by Jeremy Oakland. Turns the corner. And well, now we have that decision I was talking about before. It's fourth and one. They didn't make it. On no. the 46. If you don't get it on fourth down, then Becker has a pretty good field position to try and get something on the board in the last couple of minutes. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Casty comes back in with the play call for Jeremy Oakland, his quarterback. A big late first half play for the Monoman Indians, and at that, they're going to call timeout. Monoman calls time with 2.03 to go in the half and a 6 to nothing lead. And a good look at Six foot 165 senior quarterback Jeremy Oakland who runs the Monoman offense with authority. He looks like he's grown up quite a bit since last year. He was kind of uh, spindly and now he's still a pretty thin athlete, but uh, just a lot more maturity and poise showing in the way he runs things this year. And he was good last year. Yes, so. he was. Good basketball player, too. Becker coming in at 13 and 0. Gathered around, having a talk with Wright Lundin and his staff. Becker combined some offensive balance and a really opportunistic defense last week. They rolled up a 33-point second half, and that was the end of the line for Southland Adams in the Class C semi. 40 to 7 was the final. They outscored the Rebels 33 to nothing in the second half, and the defense forced four turnovers. So they were banging on all cylinders in that C semi against. The Southland Adams Rebels. Well, maybe they need a half to look things over because that game was tied 7 all at the half. There's the dog pound over there for the Becker Bulldogs. Now it is fourth down and a long one at the 46-yard line of Becker. Manoma right through the middle for Jason Miller. And that's a first down. Into the belly of the beast and Mike Koenig stopped it. First down. Just first inside, down. two minutes to go, 159, remaining in the first half with Jim Gilliland, Doug McLeod at the Metrodome. But just one timeout left for Manoma now, so they're going to have to put it up top in order to get some points up before halftime. That's just what he had planned on that one. Clock running now with a minute 44 to go in the half. Jeremy Oakland. the middle and complete to Chris Newman at the 42 yard line and a good pop on that Chris one by Jason Pinkston who knows what it's like on both ends of those receiving plays. Good idea for Manoma they sent two receivers deep drawing most of the secondary with that coverage to try to slide it in underneath where the tight end can do some running once he catches the ball. That's a sidearm fastball he threw there. 